Hello everyone. On this video we will be looking at the first derivative test and finding the absolute minimum and maximum values. Alright, so you remember when your first derivative is greater than zero that means you have a positive slope for every x in the interval from a to b also it shows that your function is increasing for that interval okay also if your first derivative is less than zero or negative for every x value in an interval from let's say a to b then that lets you know that your function is decreasing in that interval Okay, but if your derivative is equal to zero, for every x value in an interval, then that lets you know that your function is constant. In that interval. Okay, so now we're going to take a quick look at the first derivative test. Okay, so when your derivative changes from positive to negative, then some f prime of some value c equals zero is a local maximum. Okay, so to help visualize it, if you think of it this way. Okay, so what if you have a graph that kind of looks like that? Okay, so let's say if you have a point to the left of it and a point to the right of it. Okay, you can see here at the point on the left that your slope is positive. So f prime of x in this case is greater than zero for this particular point. And you see for this point, your slope is negative. So for this one, f prime of x is less than zero. You can see right here when it's a constant your f prime of x is equal to zero. Okay so you're going from positive to negative so you know that your f prime, well we might as well make that f prime of some c value, f prime of c is your local maximum. All right, so what if you go from negative to positive? Well, when your derivative changes from negative to positive, so changes from negative to positive, then f prime of c equals zero is a local minimum.
All right, so once again, it's kind of help visualize it. Let's say we have a graph that looks something like that. Okay, so we pick a point left to the right and our vertex down there. Okay, so you can see here that your graph would be, or your slope rather, would be negative. Let me kind of redraw that. Okay, so if you pick a point and draw your slope, your tangent at that point would be negative. So if prime of x is less than zero, and to the right of that, you can see that the slope is positive. So if prime of x is greater than zero, so you can see at that point, your f prime of c equals zero, you go from negative to positive. So your f prime of c is your minimum. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But now we're going to give an example of how to find your absolute minimum. And the same steps will work for absolute maximum also. Okay, so let's say, for example, we wanted to identify the absolute minimum for g of x equals negative 2x squared minus x plus 1 over the interval from negative 2 to 4. Okay, so I'm going to break this down into three steps. And it would work for finding the absolute minimum, the absolute maximum, either one. Okay, so your first step, is you're going to evaluate the endpoints. Okay, so that means we're going to plug in negative 2 and 4 into our g of x. So the g of negative 2 is negative 2 times negative 2 squared minus negative 2 plus 1. Okay, so that means that g of negative 2 is equal to negative 5 once you're done calculating all of that. Now we're going to plug in our 4. g of 4, that's going to equal negative 2 times 4 squared minus 4 plus 1. Once you're done calculating all of that, we'll see that g of 4 is equal to negative 35. Okay, so now your second step is you're going to find all the all the critical points for g prime of c is equal to zero. Okay, so your second step, find all critical points which is where g prime of c is equal to zero. Okay, so just going to replace x with c for that one. You don't have to do it, but it kind of helps keep you on track. So g of c is equal to negative 2 c squared minus c plus 1. So g prime of c, we take the derivative of that, it's negative 4c minus 1. So we want to find where g prime of c is equal to 0. So that really means we want to find where negative 4c minus 1 is equal to 0. Since that and that kind of matches up. So if we solve for c, we see that 
C is equal to negative 1 fourth. Okay, so now your third step is you're going to find your G of C, and then you're going to compare all three of those values. So find G of C and compare all G of X values. Okay, so if we plug in negative one fourth, G of negative one fourth into our original equation, then that's going to equal negative two times negative one fourth squared minus negative one fourth plus one. Okay, so this becomes negative one over well, one over sixteen, so two over sixteen be negative 1 8 so you have negative 1 8 plus 2 over 8 just to make that 1 over 4 2 over 8 just to have common denominators plus 1 which we write as 8 over 8 which is 9 over 8 okay so now we compare all three so we know g of negative 2 is equal to negative 5 we know that g of 4 is equal to negative 35 from those two up there. And we know that g of negative 1 4 is equal to 9 over 8. Okay, so what's your smallest value? That would be this one because it's negative 35. So this is your absolute minimum. since it is our smallest y value. So our smallest y value. So remember that g of x, y is equal to g of x, so that's why we can say this is our smallest y value. Okay, so when you plug in 4, you get your negative 35. That would be your smallest absolute minimum. All right. So, hopefully this made sense, and I will see you on the next video.